age where comfort is king and modern homes are built for style, how important are environmentally friendly principles? Yep, it doesn't sound that sexy, but insulation, energy efficiency and harnessing the power of nature are likely to be major considerations in the future. So what's a house look like when those things are its key features? Richard Langston went to central Otago to find out. <laughs> If I was to say to you words like green and eco, it might summon up images like um, this. No, no, no. Think techno, eco, freeform modernism. Which might sound like gobbledygook, but not to the designer of this house in central Otago. Welcome to my home. Come on inside. I suppose you'd be wanting to know what techno eco is. It's the best of nature, the best of technology, with style and the most efficiency we can get. The house is still a work in progress, but it's already attracted the attention of the Ministry of the Environment and Architecture magazines for its energy efficiency. In this case, we've gone with the bigger timbers, gives us more insulation. We've got an earth roof on the above us, which is 28 tonnes, and it's about 700 mil thick. This is dirt. This is pure dirt, topsoil. A little bit of river, river stone in between, but it's pretty much topsoil. So, so what is the idea of that? Well, I've always wanted an earth roof, um, but I didn't want a solid earth roof that was going to be right across the house. I wanted to be able to intermix two styles of architecture or design so that it became um, the, the eco end, I guess, attaching to a more modernist end. In the middle of winter in central Otago, with the temperature in single figures, we can stand on Jason's floor without socks or shoes. The hot water's flowing under the slab, which gives us our underfloor heating demand that we need to heat the room. So the ambient temperature in the room will stay around about 20 degrees. So at any point, we can actually wear a T-shirt or shorts. But Because it is. It's, it feels very warm mm. in here. Mm. We're usually warm from the foot up. That's the best part about underfloor heating. Um, and you can have that from the sun or you can have that from a diesel boiler or any sort of waste wood boiler. Jason's passion is harnessing energy from nature. His hot water is solar heated. When it's cloudy and cold, he uses electricity as a backup. But he says in the long run, solar will save him money. Well, one of these units generally about $2,500, but if you look at the overall installation, it's usually up to about five to put in, about $5,000 for the average home. Um, the government runs run subsidies on this at the moment, so it makes it even easier for the average person to put it in. OK, but ha so how long does it take to recoup your costs then, your outlay? Your know, general rule of thumb is generally between five to seven years. Jason combines his background as a plumber with his knowledge of renewable energies to make a living installing solar power. Ooh, looks like there's a bit of heat in there. I think in the next 100 Still years, um, all the big players are going to focus more on renewables. Uh, it's where it's going in Europe now, and Germany and so forth. Renewables are really much uh, a mainstream player. Wind power is something Jason also plans to harness for his own use. There's lots of different turbines out there. Maybe some silent turbines, like some ver vertical wind vanes that can sit on the roof, or something that's not too much of an eyesore for people. It's only going to get bigger. It's going to get much more prevalent right across the country in smaller generation and in bigger generation. But I guess where the main crux of the whole thing is going to come is a lot of small generators. Jason is nature man, but also modern man. He loves his gadgets. Oh, computers, um, you know, monitoring equipment. I'm trying to set the house up so that we can actually monitor temperatures, air flows through the cavities, air flows through the roof temperature variance in the house through different parts of the season and graph all that so that can be done automatically on the computer so and that's all in the name of living more closely to nature correct yeah and just understanding exactly how and why the house will give off what it does and give off the heat all wiring is run under the house in pipes which are easy to access the idea is to reduce exposure to electromagnetic fields can minimize how much 
wire work is in the walls and over, over above our heads, so we're not living in a complete cage of wire. So why? What, 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 is there something unhealthy about that? More from, um, I guess, chronic pain and those sorts of areas where my wife's actually been working in. Um, EMF, or electromagnetic frequency, currents travel in wires, a bit like living in an electric motor. In the world of eco-techno, health is always a consideration in design. So everything's sustainably grown, like the plywoods, the Oregons, all those sorts of, uh, I call them weed timbers. They're pretty much a weed timber for New Zealand. They're non-native. And none of them are tannalised. Why, why not tannalised? Well, tannalising has you know, particular properties and chemicals that you really don't want in timber, um, especially you know, leachates and things like that. You know, I'm just trying to steer clear them as much as possible because tannalised timber is really not that healthy for you. So. Jason is grateful to the hippies. Many of the ideas they came up with or adopted now inspire him. I'd like to see housing uh, or design of housing become more sympathetic with nature and blend in. So you're not relying on um, man-made products to do much. Um, the products will actually produce the energy, but I mean, at the end of the day, they're just going to stand there and tick along 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Mm. Richard Langston reporting. Jason, by the way, estimates that by the time he's finished, the house will have cost him about 200